I'm Dr. Ray Middleton. I help people by delivering great training. Here's an example of an episode from one of my training courses. The pre-treatment approach has five principles of care. In this film, I will explain and explore in more depth the second principle of care, which is common language construction. Now, Jay Levy particularly focuses on the value of language and focuses our attention on the type of language used in this, in, as we communicate. We need to be sensitive to the power of language. Jay encourages us all to pay attention to the phrases, words, ideas and values that the client brings into the conversation because these can help guide the working relationship. The goals we agreed to work towards together need to be defined through the client's language and phrases. Jay talks about this process as common language construction. The common language formed is the main tool for achieving a goal-driven, person-centred relationship. The initial relationship formation, where we're building trust, is the foundation for the work. The common language construction can then be used as a tool to help the work develop, to help us think about this idea. Jay uses a metaphor. He describes the house of language that we live in. We're all living in our own particular house of language, which includes the phrases, words, ideas and values that we are attached to and we believe in. Jay's point is that the person that we're working with may have a very different house of language and use different words and phrases and may hold different values from us. Interestingly, even a word they use may have a different meaning for them than it does for us. There may be a cultural divide to cross in order to enter their house of language. And so it's important to take time to construct a common language that can start to be used to understand each other. That might have particular phrases or particular meanings of, of words that you then understand. Oh, we, we understand this uh, metaphor, maybe, that's, that they want to use on their transition to a better life. The first step is to listen carefully to the phrases, language and values that are being communicated from within the house of language of the person that we're trying to communicate with, the way they currently live. They've got their own personal story or self-narrative that they've been living up to this point at which we meet them. And, and as a worker, we also have our own personal story or self-narrative and values that we've been living up to this point when we meet each other. We've got two journeys, two narratives, and we meet. And this, our journey has led us to value this kind of work. So that's part of our story. You know, why are you doing this work? When we meet someone, it's about paying attention and listening out for the phrases, words, and values that the person is expressing, and then using these to create a common language to describe our work together. When we listen to someone, we naturally focus our attention in certain areas, like a lens, and where we focus can affect what we see. Jay Levy draws on ideas from Gestalt psychology, which teaches where we focus our attention, this is called our, our focal point, in relation to all the other background information we're receiving, can lead to a drastically different interpretation of the data, the visual data or auditory data that we're interpreting. It's coming in. And we're interpreting, we might be reading something, listening to someone, we might be seeing something. But the focus affects what, our understanding. To illustrate this point, Jay asks us to take a look at this figure. You'll either see an old lady or a young woman, depending on where your focus goes initially. It's the same picture, the same data, the visual data in this case of a picture, but it could be auditory data coming in. But the combination of the background information and the focal point where you focus leads to a different understanding. The understanding we come to is called a gestalt in gestalt psychology. You're either seeing a young lady's chin in the middle of the picture or else you're seeing a nose of an old lady. It's not that one's right or wrong. It, it's trying to illustrate the point that our focus combined with the background leads to this understanding of gestalt and it can, we can have different interpretations. This visual picture, it's ambiguous, and this picture can serve as a metaphor 
to help us think about the audible information we hear from another person in conversations in the work we do. The audible information we receive in a conversation is also ambiguous, isn't it? We can focus on this or that area of the information and the conversation and that will affect our understanding. If we change what we're focusing on in the conversation, we can have a different understanding of what's actually going on for that person. In a work situation, for example, we may have particular assessment forms with a list of particular questions which guide our focus and give a particular understanding. So it's more likely that this may blind us to a fuller, more general understanding of where the person is at in their journey through life. If our focus is too narrow, we may miss the person's personal story, their narrative, their interests, values, culture, their life experiences, their strengths, their hopes, their challenges, the past traumas and current adversities. We might miss some of that if we're too focused in one particular area and wanting to know a bit of something that's going to help us decide whether or not to meet our eligibility criteria, for example, is a typical kind of focus that can kind of miss this fuller picture. It might get lost if we have to focus too narrowly our initial engagement and the assessment process. Remember, the picture of the young lady and the old woman, depending on where the focus is, we see something different. If our assessment is problem saturated and deficit focused, we will be blinded to some degree to the values, strengths and aspirations and hopes of the person within their personal story or narrative. We might just see such a small part of the overall picture that we have a very little understanding of the person's as a whole, their story uh, and where our offer might fit in their journey through life. By contrast, a pre-treatment assessment takes place within the context of someone's personal story or sometimes it's called a self-narrative. It's very important. And it deliberately draws on the five guiding principles of care to find out more information about someone. To get person-centred, we want to tune in to the person's narrative. So pre-treatment deliberately adopts this narrative approach. We need to commit to the process of common language construction by listening for the values, phrases and language that the person is using to explain their journey through life. Otherwise, our initial assessment risks viewing someone through an overly restrictive lens. We want to widen the field of view to see their personal narrative before we narrow our focus later onto these mutually defined goals in the contracting phase that we want to work out. L last week, for example, I was assessing someone who had just come out of prison and was sleeping outdoors as they had no home. I was trying to see whether we could offer him somewhere to live within a limited resources that we had access to. He was very angry initially and he said that nobody was helping him and he, he was all alone in his battle with the powers at work. So I'm using this to illustrate this point. So I tuned into and used his phrase about the battle to begin to create a common language. I validated how he felt and then wondered if there was anyone else who could join and get alongside him in his battle against the powers. You see, I'm using his language and his metaphor. Through a conversational process, using the battle metaphor, he was quickly able to identify four people locally who could potentially join with him in his battle. So he wasn't entirely alone, so it helped. We built, used that to help him to think this through a bit. Was he entirely alone? Were the potential people could help him? And he remembered people who'd helped him last time he left prison locally. And he thinks they potentially might help him again. We could also start to describe who he thought were the powers working against him. And this helps to shape up the, the, his world and how he sees it. And I was understanding his, this world that he is in. This is an example of common language construction by using the metaphors and phrases that mean something to the person that we're trying to engage with and then building on them to develop the work further. I hope you found that helpful. For more information about the training I can offer, email me at ray.middleton at ladderforlife.com or sign up for one of my free trauma-informed courses by clicking the link in the comments. Like and subscribe for more helpful videos or post a question in the comments and I'll reply.